Let's look at how the DC motor works. We have a north magnet. and a south magnet. And this will produce a B field. And this will create a magnetic field from north to south. Next, we're going to have a wire. And this is a course on robots and embedded systems. So we're going to have wires. Okay? And through this wire, a current is going to flow. So if current flows through this wire, and this wire is perpendicular to the magnet, then what will happen is a force will be induced on the wire such that the magnetic field, the electrical current, and the force are all orthogonal to each other. The actual interface to create these magnets, these electromagnets, will be to have a winding, and we saw that in our stepper motor, such that if I were to drive current through this circular path, that will create a magnetic field in this direction. From an electrical standpoint, we will see the motor has three parts. The resistance of the windings, the inductance of the coil, and then we're going to have this magic electromotive force. And interestingly enough, this conversion is two-directional. So mechanical force can be converted to electrical energy, and electrical energy can be converted to mechanical energy. So the microcontroller, in order to generate electrical energy, has to produce current through the coil and this current times the voltage across the coil, as you know, is power. And if we take power and we do it for a certain amount of time, we're going to have energy. So this is the essential conversion here that occurs in the interface. So let's look at this interface. We're going to have an output port of the microcontroller. This will be a digital output. As you know, 0 or 3.3 .3 volts. And it's going to go through a 1K resistor. The currents through these motors are quite large. The one on our stepper motor car will vary from either 100 milliamps all the way up to 1 amp, depending upon how much load there is. And these currents are way too large to connect to the microcontroller. So we're going to use a current amplifier, or a transistor. And so this is the coil, which as you saw, contains some R, some L, and EMF. And to prevent things from exploding, I'm going to add a snubber diode there. That's a 1N914. And because this is a 1 amp motor, I'm going to use a transistor which can drive lots more than 1 amp. I'm going to use a TIP120. Uh, this is a, uh, an NPN Darlington, which essentially amplifies current. And so I'm going to have current on the order of milliamps driving out of the microcontroller into the base down to the emitter, and this current is going to be amplified such that I can have up to an amp of current flowing out of my battery, across the motor, across the collector, down to the emitter, and down to ground. Here's our circuit again. Let me remind you how to connect it up to the microcontroller without exploding the microcontroller because now we have lots and lots of current. Okay. The battery here is going to control the robot. Okay. And it's important to connect the battery such that the current flow 
comes out of the battery across the motor and it will flow across the collector of this transistor and back to the battery. And the current, this one amp of current, is not going to flow into the microcontroller. Now we are going to need to power the microcontroller, so we're going to take this 8.4 into a regulator, just like we did with the stepper motor car, to get a 5 volt output and tie this into V bus. But these currents here are very tiny. So the microcontroller current, the lower current, which is on the order of you know 10 to 50 milliamps to control the board, that's going to flow through this direction and back to the motor. And so we see we got two separate current paths, one for the motor and one to drive the board. And so we have our launch pad uh, powered in this way. Okay, now it's time to write some software. We saw that the energy applied to the motor is a function of the voltage, which in our case is fixed at 8.4 volts. The current which is also fixed from 100 milliamps to 1 amp, depending upon the load, and time. And it's the time parameter that we're going to control. So I'm going to connect the circuit to PA5. I could have used any output pin. And I'm going to create what's called a pulse width modulated signal. Basically, I'm going to adjust the parameter of time. And the way I'm going to do a pulse width modulated signal is going to create a pattern such that the period or the frequency of this wave is fixed. But the duty cycle is going to vary. So if I label this time H for high and this time L for low, that's the time. And there's an H, and there's an L, and there's an H. I'm going to fix the period by forcing H plus L to be a constant. And I'm going to control the duty cycle by having H over H plus L vary. And so the microcontroller can make the motor spin faster by increasing the duty cycle or even or even faster. And we can see here that the period of each of these waves, which is H plus L, is fixed, but the duty cycle will vary.